And I think people need to think of these as energies, like stations on a radio that you tune into. Most people are just dialed into the wrong station. They're dialed into the stress station, uh, the anxiety station, the lack of purpose station. Um, and it's programmed by a society that doesn't lead people to their potential. So to have access to different stations can be completely empowering to know that when we're depressed or stressed, that we can change that station and get on a better frequency, one that is harmonious to our life purpose rather than discordant to who we are. Noble Warriors, before we get to the next episode, I want to tell you a little bit about our next transformational retreat for entrepreneurs and for high achievers. At the next retreat, we will help you unlock the power inside your mind to break through your limitations and take control of your business. And unlike any other retreats or ceremonies, the Ultra Dose Retreat is an immersive experience designed for entrepreneurs like you to upgrade your inner power and accelerate your vision over one long weekend. If you've been looking for a retreat, a peer group to take you to the next level, visit chatwithck.com, apply for a free clarity session today, and let's get you started. I'm really excited to have Lee Holden, master teacher of Qigong and Tai Chi with me today. Lee is being featured, at least I know, uh, Glow.com and Summit LA. And the people that have attended his workshops have always shared so much like, oh, I didn't know all these things about Qigong and Tai Chi. I'm definitely going to start. So I really appreciate how he's able to ignite the curiosity, the interest, the passion around this Chinese art. And he's also producing this beautiful documentary called Superhuman. I got to see a little raw footage about that and what he features extraordinary human beings doing extraordinary things. So we'll be diving deeper there. So thanks so much for being on the show, Lee. Yeah, thanks so much. It was great to run into you at uh, Summit LA and do some Qigong. <laughs> exactly. So, so I'm actually very curious about your origin story because you're, you know, American and then now you're, this, you're, you're, your whole profession is focusing on Qigong, this Chinese art. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about why you, how you got into all this in the first place? Yeah, I'm just a, a white guy from California doing really cool Chinese ancient arts. Though the way I got into it was through sports and martial arts. So as a kid, I was studying martial arts and I saw my teacher break a stack of bricks. You know, when somebody breaks a stack of bricks, that's pretty impressive to a 10-year-old. And he looked at me as I was like curiously looking at him like, how did you do that? He said, that was through the power of chi. And then he grabbed my collar and he pulled me close and he said, chi is not for hurting people, but it's for healing. And I was like, ah, oh, yes, master. Okay, got it. Then some years later, I had the worst injury of my life playing collegiate soccer at UC Berkeley. And the sports doctors, the physical therapists couldn't really do anything for me. I was out for the season. That was my first season, like starting at a division one college. So it was like my dream come true. And the second game in, I'm out for the season. The, um, after taking painkillers and cortisone shots and physical therapy, you know, a few weeks later, I, I remember this teacher and went back to see him and he did acupuncture on me and he showed me Qigong exercises, some funky, weird movements that I had no idea what I was doing. But all of a sudden one, two treatments, I was like 80, 90% better. And after a week and a half, I was back running and playing soccer. And so all the teammates <clears throat> and the coaches were like, what did you do? And this really was a catalyst for me to dive deeper into Eastern arts, Qigong especially, and really seek out ways that we could heal ourselves through movement, breath, uh, mind, and things like that. So when I graduated college, I went to Asia and studied with Qigong masters, uh, learning their secrets, working closely with them, and distilling the information so that it's practical and accessible for Westerners. So pause for a second there. <clears throat> so let's say I put myself in the shoes of a, a noble warrior, my audience member, who is maybe intrigued, who may be even wanting to go check it out, to experience uh, it himself, herself, right? It's one thing to hear about it from Lee, it's from CK, it's another to actually experience from oneself. So 
this is an area where now we're getting getting the into the woo so to speak because qigong is one of those things yeah the energy work the movement it's obvious like you can actually hear uh, the feel the, the difference right away like yeah. that but in terms of the qi the prana the experience itself how does one differentiate someone who is like say a charlatan right mm-hmm. or someone who is the the real deal can you right. tell uh, our audience a little bit about that's that? great I think that's a really good question. So if we step back a little bit, chi means energy. Energy means your aliveness. And we don't really have this word in, let's say, a Western framework. There's many different kinds of chi. Where do we get chi from? You get chi from breathing. You get chi from eating. We get chi from nature. We get chi from each other. So chi gong is the practice at working with your aliveness in a skillful way. Gong means skill. So how skillful are you at working with the energy of your body, your health and vitality, the energy of your emotions, your feelings, and the energy of your mind or spirit? And so energy can be looked at in a lot of different lenses. So when you're looking for a teacher, it's important to know what your intention is for your practice. Often people come to Qigong for relaxation, stress management, increased energy, or pain. But it has application to all layers of life. So I often recommend people to understand why they're coming to Qigong and then understand what is the best teacher or the best practice for me to meet that intention. Because there's Qigong goes way back. It's a it's a three, four thousand year uh, practice or an ancient history, probably older than that. And there's three thousand styles of Qigong. So how do we decide what style is right for me? Um, my goal in developing Holden Qigong was to make ancient practices accessible to modern life. So my practice and my style would be, in a nutshell, less stress, more energy. And if we clear the stress, let's say, out of our mind and emotions, our bodies feel better. So we all know now through research and Western medicine research that stress is the root cause of most illness. And so when we see how stressful life is and modern life is and how we've moved away from our natural expression of chi, we can use this practice as a way to come back to our center, come back to our authenticity, to ourselves, and really develop our internal power. Now, here in the West, we have lots of different teachers. Um, Sometimes they're more martial oriented. So if you want to learn how to break a stack of bricks, you probably don't want a teacher like me. You want a more martial Qigong oriented practitioner. If you want a really esoteric practice that is more in Taoist esoteric arts and spirituality, again, probably not me. There's probably some better teachers. But if you want something that's going to deal with pain, balance, uh, accessibility, where you can you know, practice in 10 to 15 minutes, you're going to feel a, a major shift in your state of mind and body, then this might be a great thing to start with. So I like to be an entry level. I like to take people who don't know anything about Qigong or have never had an experience and give them a a really wonderful experience that's within themselves and access that power from within and give them uh, accessibility really to, to what they have in their internal capacities. Yeah, one of the things that I was the most impressed with you is, well, I'm uh, of Chinese origin, so so I'm not uh, dissimilar uh, or so not familiar with uh, Qigong or Tai Chi. But what I really, really appreciate uh, how you explain Qigong is you made it so accessible. You literally mm-hmm. just started with movement and you started to ask us to pay attention to our internal state. I, I really love how you just kind of sneak that in there and then... And then people, I just do simple movement and right away, we, uh, as you said, within 10, 15 minutes, really feel the difference from the movement, from the moving their chi. Um, so love that. So thanks that's so much awesome. for it. Just Thank you. Really appreciate the way that you teach. Yeah, I mean, that's what I, my, I'm passionate about is just giving people that aha. They don't know that they have power within themselves. We are always looking for power joy, happiness as an outside in approach. And Qigong gives us that inside out approach that reorients us. And we get to discover where power truly lies, which is within ourselves. So since you're a master of internal energy or external energy, can you tell us a little bit about when someone is asking like, okay, so, so uh, less stress, more energy, 
how do I, what do I measure? Like, what are my metrics? Right. You know, this is an art, this is an art of subjective science. You know, the ancient art of Qigong meditation, the yogis, the rishis, the Qigong masters, they were the scientists of subjective experience. And often we invalidate our subjective experience to objective science. And really what's happening now, it's exciting times because our objective Western minds, our scientific approach, that's an outside in is verifying, documenting these ancient arts that were discovered through subjective means. By going inward, we have a way in which we experience the universe. And so you to be able to trust in yourself and your subjective experience, whether it's feelings, sensations, consciousness, your own body gives you tremendous capacity and capability to know who you are and your place in the universe. So to reorient, to help people reorient that there's validity by looking within can be extremely empowering as well. And we all know intuitively we can feel something shift. And when you feel that shift within yourself, that is what we want to hang on to. So after, let's say, we do a practice um, 15, 20 minutes, if you're checking in and you feel your energy elevate and as you go through the day, those triggers where you normally get stressed or agitated, they start to be softer and more relaxed. And then what they do is eventually they disappear. So those irritations, those stressors sitting in traffic get reframed um, in what we call transforming stress into vitality because energy is energy. Stress is one kind of energy depression, anxiety, these are all energy states. You're not going to find anything solid or physical about those states. And if we can transform those into something that we want, that we want to cultivate, joy, inner peace, happiness, a sense of being centered, it's just transforming one energy state to another. You know, for example, somebody came in <clears throat> and, saw, and saw me as a patient, and she her, it was her mom. She was like, my daughter's depressed. She has no energy. She's in bed all day. She's not going to class. And I said, what happened? She said, well, her boyfriend broke up with her and she got really depressed and then just stopped doing everything. And so it was like her, she had no energy. And I worked with her and got her <clears throat> into a better state. And she was going to class and whatnot. She still made, say, maybe 50% to where she was. And all of a sudden she came back into class and saw me. And she was like 100% joyful, smiling. And her mom said, yeah, the boyfriend got back together. They, they worked it out. So I was like, where was the energy before and after? It was in your mind. It's a perceptual thing. And the energy of our minds is so powerful. And if we can shift perception, attention, and work with the energy of the mind and the energy of the body, we develop power. Because energy is there. We just don't know how to tap into it. People, listeners, have energy. and You have the capabilities where it's just latent, it's in potential form. And then with certain breath movements, practices, and states of mind, you tap into the right kind of energy that you want in your life at this moment. I love that. Thank you so much for articulating in that way. I mean, part of what I, what I teach myself as well is how do you actually align the mindset, the heart set, the, uh, the health set, and the soul set together, and then really tap into that uh, unlimited potential that's within all of us. Um, that's probably a little bit more esoteric in the way that you articulate it. What you articulate is a lot more accessible. <clears throat> well, I think what you said is right. Because how we can actually reframe things and then boom, boom, and tap into that. For the, for the people who are listening to my uh, Noble Warrior podcast, they want to up-level their performance. They want to tap into their potential. They want to really step into their their purpose in life and really increase the capacity to serve as an entrepreneur, as a leader. So everything that you said is so on point to the way that, that we are talking about here. So that's awesome. You know, there's something <clears throat> in Qigong, it's called the three treasures. Mm. The three treasures is the treasure of your body, the treasure of your heart and the treasure of your consciousness. Mm. And so what you just said, your, you know, mindset, heart set, I love that term and health set. It's really gauges and I think people need to think of these as energies, like stations on a radio that you tune into. Most people are just dialed into the wrong station. They're dialed into the stress station 
uh, the anxiety station, the lack of purpose station. Um, and it's programmed by a society that doesn't lead people to their potential. So to have access to different stations can be completely empowering to know that when we're depressed or stressed, that we can change that station and get on a better frequency, one that is harmonious to our life purpose rather than discordant to who we are. Hey, listeners, if you're enjoying this podcast and all the nuggets of wisdoms, go to bit.ly forward slash Noble Warrior Review and leave us a five-star review and tell us what you're getting out of this podcast. This will really help us attract other people like you and share these nuggets of wisdoms to others just like you. Okay, do that right now, bit.ly forward slash Noble Warrior Review. Thanks a lot. And that takes a skill set. So Qi Gong, Gong is a skill set to be able to change frequency, to change mindset, heart set, or body state into what we truly want to create. And then we feel on purpose. And you all know, entrepreneurs know this, that when you're on purpose, you tap into an abundance of energy. We get inspired. Inspiration gives us a surge of energy. Whereas when we're in a daily grind, that's depleting of energy. So people that are energized have more chi. They're inspired. They inspire others. They become leaders. They tap into unseen forces that gives them vision, a pioneering vision that that isn't following just a normal way of moving through the world. So it sounds like your listeners are tapped into this kind of energy and this kind of spirit. And Qigong only enhances that pioneering mindset, that entrepreneurial mindset by very specifically helping people get into flow state to transform stress into vitality and to line up to an inner compass that leads them to staying on purpose. So is there, um, so I'm going to geek out on this just a little bit for, for my listeners sake. Is there some specific techniques or movement or posture that you can tell them like, Hey, you know, if you're stressed out right now, if you drop into this particular posture, doing this mm. movement, doing this breath, you know, within 10, 15 minutes, you can then get yeah. to a heightened level of energy. Is Absolutely. Right? So let's, because this is a, a, an audio version, let's do some things that we can do vocally uh, rather than visually. So one great thing to do, and we see this in animals, children, and athletes, it's a very intuitive way to transform stress back into purified energy. And it's shaking, shake the body loose. So right now, if you're not driving your car, just take your hands to your sides and shake like an athlete before an event, like before an Olympic event. Now, the other key thing is breathing. So you're going to shake and inhale through the nose and you're going to exhale through the mouth as you're shaking your hands out like this to your sides or in front of you. So shake out to the sides, down below, really pump your wrists or shake out your hands and then breathe. Just, just do three times in through the nose, out through the mouth. You're going to... And as you exhale, you're blowing away the stress and you're clearing it out, let's say, through your fingers. Do one more. And 30 seconds to a minute, when you have your hands down to your sides, notice how your hands feel now. You should feel tingling, buzzing, some electricity moving in your body. So you've just transformed, let's say, a state of tension or stress now into purified energy. Mm. How's that feel? That feels great. Yeah, it's amazing. So Thank you. These little tricks can be very helpful in the middle of your day when we're low resource, when we're feeling stressed out, when we're feeling a time crunch, when we're feeling our internal mind um, oppressing us, meaning that our thoughts are leading us into a stressful state. And we all know that when we're in fight or flight or a stressful state, that limits peak performance. And when we're in a relaxed, energized state, we perform way better. That's beautiful. So actually, let's, let's talk a little bit about from your experience dealing with your patients or students, what kind of transformation have you seen? You know, let's say when they come to you, they feel, are there case studies where you could say, hey, when so-and-so come to me, they were X. We did a little bit of sessions and then they were now Y. 
just yeah. tell us a little bit of, about the before and after. So then this, that way people can, in similar situations, can see, oh, I didn't know that was possible. Let yeah. me now explore Qigong and Tai Chi as a means to help me get there. I love that. And you know, quite simply, I often tell people to notice how they're feeling before they start class and then notice how they feel after. And you'll feel a transformation, even in one exercise like we just did. Um, I work with a lot of people in pain, so back pain, neck pain. I work with a lot of people, let's say, with anxiety issue, mental, emotional issues, mainly anxiety, depression, and stress. And anxiety, depression. Like clinically diagnosed? Both clinically and self-proclaimed. Let's say, I just feel, I just feel depressed. Oh, man, I'm also stressed out. Or doctors will prescribe their patients to come to me with clinical depression. Mm. Um, what's interesting with mental, emotional states is that your body – shapes to the emotional energy. So you can tell that somebody's depressed by their body posture. So if somebody's depressed, they're gonna their chest is going to be sunken and their head is going to be down and their face will have a certain expression. When your energy elevates and you do movements, you shift your posture, you change your breathing and mood follows. So your mood and your body are intimately related. If you change one, the other changes. So we can shift mental, emotional states fairly quickly and get people into empowered states where then that creates habituated ways of being and moving through the world. So I would say those are really common. Now, more extraordinary states are when we have, let's call them extraordinary healings, where people have come in for side effects of cancer, where the doctor is saying, you know, you have four months to live you know, but the chemotherapy is going to be really hard on your system and your energy. So people do Qigong, slow movements. And I've seen people do have miraculous recoveries and are in remission from, you know, death sentences, really. So one of my patients, he was watching my show on public television. I have a, I have a show that is usually nationally televised. And he's in his hospital bed, just clicking through the stations. And he sees me doing Qigong and he just thinks, what is this guy doing? It's this weird movements. I'm in on a river, you know, doing slow flows with nice music. And he just starts to visualize himself doing it. And then he starts to do it in his hospital bed. Then he orders the DVDs. Then he starts to do it with me little by little. And after four months, he's recovering. And after a year, he's one of my Qigong teachers. And he feels like, you know, this gave me a new lease on life. And I'm um, full recovery and remission. It's been four years and he teaches Qigong all over the place. And he's got so much energy. He's so vibrant and vital that, um, you know, just, just a joy to be around and, and such an inspiration uh, with a su- success story like that. So, so, so they're not using your method as a way to replace what they were already doing, let's say uh, uh, chemotherapy or anything like that. They use your methods, your teaching, your DVDs as a way to augment what they're doing. Is that accurate? I I like complementary medicine because there is always a time and a place for Western medicine, you know, infectious disease, you break your arm, car accidents. You know, this medicine is really designed as preventative. And that's where it becomes so powerful. In fact, the way the medicine worked was you would pay your doctor, your Qigong doctor, your acupuncturist, often were the same person. You pay them a monthly fee. And as soon as you got sick, you stopped paying. So this becomes a model of true healthcare because now the system is set up wrong if we want health. The system is set up and designed as sick care. And nobody gets paid unless people are sick. So unfortunately, we have more people sick than ever before. We're living longer lives, but there's more sickness and disease. So the quality of our lives is often quite poor. So this this medicine is designed for health, vitality, joy, happiness, and deep, deeply in uh, deep connections to other people and life around you. And that's how this medicine was designed. So when you activate And I think the thing to think about when we're talking about health and healing is that it's not the Qigong that heals you. It's your own internal healing power. And when we tap into the healing power that we have within us, miraculous things can happen because our bodies, when we get out of stress mode, have an innate capability to self-regulate, 
and activate a healing power that's beyond any medicine, whether it's Eastern or Western, than um, than we can imagine. That's why the power of the mind is such is the strongest healer. So so now I'm curious. So this is what you do, and from what I understand is that most people have what they do regularly, and then they have the the part of them that they're growing and researching and R and D. So can you tell us a little bit more about what are you experimenting right now personally, in addition to what, you know, the foundations of your skills and knowledge? Yeah, that's great. I mean, as you mentioned, I'm making this movie called Superhuman. It's going to be a docu-series. And we basically went around the world looking for people with extraordinary abilities in the energetic and Qigong arts, in the powers of the mind, in spiritual capabilities. We traveled through Tibet. China, martial arts masters, meditation masters. We went to Russia and looked for the, the psychics and just were curious about what, are, what is the human potential and what are we capable of? And so some of these masters that we found, these incredible practitioners, uh, showed us techniques and tools that they use. And so that's what I'm working on. I'm working on definitely there's a foundation with all traditions that work with energy. There's definitely a tradition of working with breath, consciousness, and mind. And how these ingredients work together is kind of the secret recipes of various cultures. So ancient cultures, whether it was India, China, Russia, Southeast Asia, shamans from South America, they were the early day biohackers. And they have a lot to teach modern people on how to integrate and how to reconnect to the power of nature and, and the power that's within ourselves. And when we start to combine modern technology with ancient, ancient technology, we start to see what is capable and where our potential lies. So I think this is what's really exciting in our day and age is how we can complement, combine, and synergistically access our human potential. So, you gave me the privilege of watching some of the raw footage that you guys have already put together. Thank you so much. And as a scientific person who has a PhD in biomedical engineering, when I first saw it, the first thing that comes to my mind is, oh, there's, CG, there's a lot of CGI in this. And then my friend, who is the, Derek, who is the founder of Glow, he said, no, I was there. Uh, he said that I had the guy stripped naked, so there's literally nothing connected to the person. And he held my hands, and then I felt pulses of electricity running through my body. He's like, no, this is the real thing. Yeah. So I'm curious. Uh, That's for what the we did. Listening to things like this, again, right, that naturally the, the egoic mind or the scientific training would say, nah, you know, it's not possible. It's possible. Can you highlight some of the personal experiences that you have witnessed yourself and that was like, whoa, this is so intriguing, the power of the human mind, you know, things like that. That would be really, really great if you can illustrate some. Yeah. Uh, you know, this story that you said was just great because um, this is a master from China. And we found people that have this, let's say, strong electrical current that moves through their bodies that they can project into somebody else. And these are healers, martial artists, um, spiritual practitioners they seem to be able to generate a <clears throat> current of energy inside themselves. So in China, this is called chi. In India, prana or kundalini. In Tibet, these practitioners do certain stances, postures, breathing exercises, meditations to cultivate this extremely strong electrical current. And, and uh, what, what Derek was talking about is you, you extremely downplayed it because – when this guy holds your hand, it is stronger than putting your finger in a light socket. And you feel all your muscles in your arm and through one side of your body where he's holding completely contract and spasm with electricity. And basically what he's doing, it's beneficial. It opens all your channels. And he says, you know, a week of these treatments with him is like a year of acupuncture uh, or more. And it's just so incredible because as soon as he holds your arm and you feel this current, you immediately go, it shocks you out of a particular mindset set of what you thought was possible into an expansive, expanded mindset. <clears throat> so when we traveled, you know, we traveled with the scientists and made sure and we vetted lots of people so that we knew that they didn't have, let's say, a battery pack on them or any gadgets. So we scanned them with airport detector kind of 
uh, devices and made sure that they weren't, they were legit. And then when we had the, um, the treatments, it was just mind blowing and incredible. So we like, like Derek was saying, we had them take clothes off airport security detectors and then give treatments to people. And, uh, just absolutely blows your mind. Um, things, you know, we found in Russia was so cool. We had, there's one woman that we show in the movie, but she can, we blindfold her um, with, you know, medical grade blindfolds. And, and she just, um, basically she just reads and sees with her blindfold on. She'll tell you shapes, colors. We, we, we go to the car and get a car manual in English and she reads the book uh, with the blindfold on. And so it's kind of like, what is it? How, what does this mean about our minds and our, and our capabilities? So there's physical energetic capabilities. We're showcasing mind power. And then me, for me, most importantly, it's to then teach people how to do some of these techniques themselves and tap into those powers that we're all capable of. So naturally speaking, so I'm curious if you ask them questions like this, because in my mind, if they have superpowers like this as a scientific person or as a, someone who is documentarian, I'll be asking them, hey, why don't we you know, create a way to do a scientific experiments so then we can help others do the same, tap into yeah. their potential. And can you tell us some of their responses of why they don't necessarily want to share mm. how they got to that state? Yep. You know, that there's a lot of research in Russia and it's been happening since the eighties. Uh, there's definitely research happening in the United States as well. Um, it's interesting. Some of it has been covered up. Some of it has been um, a lot of these people, for example, the Chinese masters, they don't want their name or their faces shown because in China, what can happen is that you can be tagged by the government. You can be forced into government jobs, healers into positions you don't want. You can get put in jail. There's throughout history, there's been persecutions um, all kinds of horrible things that people have with special abilities. And so often we found that people are, are in secrecy. Um, and also then when we do scientific testing, there's ways in which people will say, well, that's not double blind or it's not legit or it could have been this. Um, so as we go through the research, I think more money more legitimate science, um, more safety and things like that would be really helpful. And I think that's kind of phase two of this project. Mm -hmm. I appreciate yeah. that. So, so where, where are you with this project right now? We are just finishing up the edits. Um, it's going to be a, a kind of an initial launch in January and a fuller launch probably in March. And um, it's going to be a nine, a nine episode docu-series three of those episodes are the main chunk of the movie where we went searching for superhuman then i have wonderful interviews with um, modern day experts like wim hoff or deepak chopra um, scientists like bruce lipton and dan siegel and then the last three episodes are a how-to so viewers can actually start practicing the techniques that we learned and feel a shift in their energy and potential right away. Oh, that's great. And it's, it's, it's great for, for, for my audience, for guys like me, who is always looking for ways to tap into their next potential. Yeah. I actually was particularly intrigued about one of the guys who I can't remember where he's from. I think it's Indonesia, where he's called holding a leaf. And then yeah. as a way to similarly, it was so incredible as a way to help heal others through yeah. the leaf. And then can you actually highlight on that guy just a little bit? Yeah, he's incredible, an incredible healer. And he's one of those electrical human beings. Um, his story is quite fascinating where he developed this internal power, but he had so much energy that unlike that Chinese master, the Qigong master who can modulate it. So he can actually, the Chinese master holds your hand and sends the current but this guy, he has so much power that he only can touch you with a leaf because if he holds you directly, it's too strong and it's dangerous. Like David says in the, David's the star of the movie, he said, oh, if he touches me directly, he could give me a heart attack. 
So he touches him with a leaf and then we take a, uh, an LED light socket detector to see if there's like a, you, a detector to see if the a plug is working. And so he puts it on him and he just gets this incredible jolt and shock and sends him flying backwards. It was an incredible, cool scene uh, with somebody with just tremendous power. So what do you see is possible with this uh, docu-series? I mean, three now that you yeah. bring awareness to the human potential, you maybe teach some elementary fundamental techniques as a way to help the, the viewers get access and awareness to their internal state. What do you hope to achieve with this docuseries? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think really three things. The first three episodes, inspiration. Like, what's possible? Watch some of these people that we found and discovered. Open your mind. Um, you know, kind of, kind of confront your internal belief systems, just kind of like we were just having, like my science mind, my Western mind, my, you know, intuitive sense, you know, it kind of pushes our boundaries a little bit. And then <clears throat> the next three in episodes would be information. Let's talk to some experts. Let's talk to scientists. Let's talk to modern day spiritual leaders and get their take on it. So inspiration, information, and then practicality. What am I capable of? Um, what if I tried it for myself? So giving people simple, practical tools to try it for themselves and see if they feel a shift, an improvement of their energy, an expansion of their mind, and a deeper sense of life connection. So on that note, as a, as a teacher, also as a student yourself, what do you see is the journey that it takes from beginner to familiarity to like being informed to mastery like what's the what's the most difficult part of uh, going through this journey yeah that's great i think I, i see it a lot as i as i explored the possibilities and saw people train to very high levels like these people were talking about is very much like olympic athlete training so these are people with a skill set already developed, you know, if you want to be in a, uh, you know, NBA basketball player, sometimes it helps to be six, five or taller. So there's an innate natural talent. Then they train, you know, three to five hours every day. And they train since they were younger, often teenagers, sometimes before, and they develop a skill set that's extraordinary. Like any professional athlete, or Olympian, you're like, wow, these guys have trained it way beyond ordinary. So that's what we found. We found basically the Olympians in this world. Now, not everybody wants to go win a gold medal in the Olympics or be a, you know, NBA basketball player to enjoy the sport or to get the benefits of going for a swim or exercising or playing a particular sport. So that's kind of comes back to your initial point. What is our intention with the practice? And sometimes the intention with the practice is just to expand into ourselves, feel our own internal power, have access to resources that lead to health, vibrancy, happiness, deeper intimate connections with with our friends, family, loved ones, and a, a spiritual, visceral connection to a higher power, the universe. And that's what I feel like everybody can do within themselves. And we just start to, to walk along the path and see what's capable for ourselves and where it's going to lead us. Do you mind uh, concretize that a little bit more? Like, can you share with us your personal practice or the practices that you've witnessed with these grandmasters with extraordinary yeah. potential? So that way people can say, oh, all right, so these morning ritual, right. Or, or evening rituals or the way he breathes or right. whatever. Yeah. So that way it's a little bit more specific. Yep. So it's, it's, it's not going to be anything necessarily that people haven't heard. A lot of times it's what you already know and combining it in just the right way. So it's taking the ingredients that we have. So we all breathe. We all have mind energy. We all have body energy. We all have emotional energy. And how do we use these in an integrated way? So integrating seems to be the key, meaning that think of your breath body, mind, emotion, spirit, like five horses. 
And often what in normal life, these horses run in different directions and keep us kind of stuck or stagnant. If we line all those horses up in one direction, you're going to have horsepower. You're going to have energy going in a direction that you want. So that's what I find is key is alignment. So for me, let's say a morning practice is going to be to set intention, what I want to create for the day. I often need to create anything. I'm going to need chi. I'm going to need energy. So let's say we're at, we're looking at a map. Here's where I want to go. I'm going to need fuel in the tank to get there. And I'm also going to need clear clarity of direction. How do I get energy? One is breathing practices. So quite simply, the way you breathe influences your energy dramatically. So some breath work um, in Qigong, stance training, holding certain body postures. Then I'm going to give you a real key to this whole thing that is kind of cuts through and gives people access to inner resources that these folks have developed. It is slowing down. By slowing your body down, you cultivate energy. And this is something very, um, very key in Qigong practice is slow your body. When you slow your body, you slow your mind. When you slow your mind, you enter into the present moment. In the present moment is where all the energy and power exists. So when you do slow flows in Qigong, you create that alignment. And so that's where I think is one of the things that Qigong has to offer that a lot of other techniques don't tap into. And it is slow your body down to access inner power. So actually on that note, Lee, and you know that you probably want to jump into other techniques that you use, but on this very point, which is actually counterintuitive to the conventional thinking, a lot of people who are listening, the high performers, they want to go harder, they want to go faster, they want to, you know, get into CrossFit because they believe that going harder, going more intense is the way to increase one's capacity to one's own energy take. So speak. So what you just said is is the is flipping that on on its head. So say a little bit more about why slowing down, being more present, is a way to tap into one's more uh, one's one's own energy tank versus the conventional right. thinking. And, and conventional thinking too is is often a little bit backwards because we don't then access what we truly want. So. By slowing down, you get to orient. And people want to have more moments. Most people actually want more moments of elevated energy, of deep connection to whatever it is they're doing in the present moment or whatever their craft is. And this is called being in the zone. So even if you are going fast and a professional athlete, when you listen to people in the zone, athletically, they say it's as if time stands still. You're one with everything that you're doing. And there's an elevation of energy that happens. So to access flow state, <clears throat> we could either do something very dangerous like ride a 50-foot wave or climb, rock climb or something like that. We can access it because your life is being threatened. You are extremely focused. But if you slow down, you can safely enter flow state each and every day very easily. Now, think of the best things in your life, whether it's um, – sipping the, the, the finest glass of wine. You don't want to do that quickly. You want to savor it. Watching a sunset, you don't want to rush through it. Being intimate with your partner, it's not a race to get to the end. So those, those moments that we want to create, we want to create more moments of elevated energy. And one way that we can do that very simply is to slow our bodies down. You know, there's a saying in the ancient traditions, walk in ways contrary to the world. So the world is rushing around, always one step ahead of themselves, constantly future projecting. I'm going to project into the future my state of happiness. So when I have so much money, when I retire, then I'll be happy. Well, slowing down and Qigong practice gives you a little mini vacation from that way of thinking and creates a moment, a vacation moment, in your everyday life where you can stand back, look at the horizon and the landscape. It's like a view on the top of the mountain and be able to orient to what it is that you want to create. So slowing down gives us that perspective. And it's not about always going slow. It's just about slowing down enough to get perspective 
and to increase energy to then ramp it up and go quickly. I appreciate that. Thank you. So there's a space. Here's what I articulated to my audience. There's a space between stimulus and response. Mm -hmm. And then mastery is gaining awareness to the minute moments, the finer, the moment that you can get to, then the more precision that you can have and uh, to bring that awareness to that, the, the, the microseconds, the nanoseconds. That's the way I, 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 I articulate it for myself. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's just uh, like we were been talking, it's shifting the mindset. And when you, to create that shift in mind, sometimes we need to use the tools of our body, slowing our breath down. For example, if, Listeners, just take a really slow breath in through the nose and out through the nose two or three times. Mind states, awareness, energy state, all of a sudden just shift. So if you're feeling agitated, stressed out, if you slow your breath down, all of a sudden that will create that shift and give you one of those micro moments to reorient and re-navigate to where you want to go. So you were in the middle of sharing. So other than the fuel using breath work as a way to do that, are there other practices that you use personally? I mean, there's lots of practices. So meditation is a fantastic practice to reorient your mind. Any specific kind of meditation? I like a lot. There's, so I teach a lot of different kinds of meditation. So I feel like meditation should be cross-trained like fitness. So there's meditations where you're visualizing Let's say visualization is wonderful for working with the power of intention. Then there's mindfulness, which is working with the power of attention. So you have this yin and yang of the mind, intention and attention. So mindfulness is going to be less content oriented, just feeling where you are, what is happening in the present moment and holding attention there. And intention is going to be crafting new vision of what you want your life to look like of you what do you want a particular outcome to be and so both of these powers of the mind should be worked with as a way to strengthen energy um i have a there's the meditation question go ahead you, sorry i have a personal question for you please so i actually have a hard time visualizing things uh -huh. i think in concepts so so if I dream about Lee Holden as an example, it's not your face that I see. It's a concept, like a, a concept of Lee Holden. So do you have any suggestions for people who, are, who have a hard time in visualizing? Yeah, because sometimes our visualization turns into sensation. Like if I say visualize golden light on your body, some people won't see golden light. They'll just feel like sunlight shining on them. And that's totally fine. That's a form of internal representation. But the more of your inner senses you can access, the stronger that in the power of intention comes. So in Chinese, intention is a combination of the character of your eyes, like what you see, which is visualized, um, mind, which is attention, and heart. So your emotion, like how much desire is behind, how, much, how passionate are you about it? Where is your attention going? And then how are you representing it? And this is the symbol in Chinese of intention, which I think is extremely relevant. So desire and passion, visuals, where you're, how, how strong can you hold your attention to that concept? So I think don't get wrapped up that I need to visualize it, but bring in sensation. You can also bring in auditory. So I'll ask you a question. How do you know that, like when you're thinking about, let's say, like you said, Lee Holden, how do you know you're conceptualizing me as a person? Do you hear my voice? Do you feel something of that? Or you, you, you start to hear the words that we had in our conversation, the energy of our conversation. How does it represent it in your mind as a concept? Uh, auditory and uh, intuitive knowing. Intuitive knowing. So uh, more auditory and more kinesthetic. And so we all have our skill sets, either visual, kinesthetic, auditory, depending our personality. So it, all of those are good. Then what I would say is now to strengthen intention, start to bring in the ones that are more challenging. So start to bring, exercise the power of your visualization 
even by looking at something in the room, like right in front of me is a teapot, and then I'll close my eyes and hold the vision of the teapot in my mind. Mm. Or you, you know, just start to strengthen my visual inner representation. Mm -hmm. Colors are good too. Like you can visualize blue. Um, maybe you can't just see a blue color, but maybe you see blue ocean and remember a time where you're around blue ocean, sunlight shining on the water. And that starts to strengthen that power. Mm. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause in my mind, I was always, always thinking like, man, I wish I can visualize better. Right. Cause as oh. a, as a, that you go at my goes, how can I do this better? I could do better. But, yeah. But, but as you're, pra- as you're sharing this perspective, what I hear is, Hey, you know, it's okay to start where you're at auditory kinesthetic. And then should you want to get better at visualizing, maybe actually do like painting or Photoshop where you actually are looking at the different pixels as a way to duplicate it. Yeah. And that that's how you can get better at a visual representation as you said. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's like a muscle. You just strengthen it. Beautiful. So yeah. breath work, uh, meditation, anything else before I know that you got to go in, in less than five minutes. Is there yeah. anything else that you like to share? So it's like, can um, bring to their daily ritual. I would say, um, activate chi, activate your energy. One breathe deeper. I mean, that's just a really basic thing that I found with a lot of superhumans working with the breath, but breathe slower, deeper, um, mm-hmm. slow down. So slow down breath and then slow down body, do some Qigong flows. And uh, maybe we can send your listeners some free Qigong flow so that they can try it themselves mm. and then get your mind, um, mind clear with what you want to create. So a clear intention and then use as much of your mental faculties as you can. So feel it, hear it and see it. Mm. What a beautiful way to wrap this up. Lee, thank you so much for sharing your, um, your craft I really appreciate your articulation, how you explained this to make it so accessible for the regular people who are listening for this. And also thank you for doing the work that you do in bringing these masters, master teachers who are usually not in the public eyes, right? In, into your docu series, superhumans. Um, so those people who are intrigued and who want to follow up with your work with this docu series, where do they go? Okay. We can go to, superhumanmovie.com for this one, superhumanmovie.com. And then the show notes. If you're interested in Qigong practice, my name, Holden, last name, Holden, and then Qigong, holdenqigong.com. And Qigong is spelled Q-I-G-O-N-G. So holdenqigong.com. I'll have the docuseries there as well as all the Qigong practices too. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate bringing your heart your your mind your skills to you know to my audience really really appreciate you thank you oh thanks ck it was so great to have that conversation with you hey listeners if you're enjoying this podcast and all the nuggets of wisdoms go to bit.ly forward slash noble warrior review and leave us a five-star review and tell us what you're getting out of this podcast this will really help us attract other people like you and share these nuggets of wisdoms to others just like you Okay, do that right now, bit.ly forward slash noble warrior review. Thanks a lot.